Hey guys, Level Cap here. Today is Monday, which means it's time for an episode of Loadout, the series where you guys, the viewers, get to pick a gun and customization for me to use. The way you do this is you leave a comment down below letting me know what kind of weapon and accessories you'd like me to run with, and I will pick one of the top rated comments for the next episode. Today's top comment comes from Wolfie. He says, Call of Duty 4 NoobTuber Loadout. The M16A4, don't worry, it's actually usable, with iron sights, heavy barrel, laser sight, underslung rail, and the Tiger Naval Camo, which which represents the blue tiger camo from Call of Duty. An M9, which is gonna be naked or suppressed. I chose to go with just the plain naked M9 with a flat urban camo. Then we have the med bag and high explosive grenade launcher. M67 frag grenade and grenadier perk, of course, for the extra nades. Let your inner noob out and noob tube everyone. Spray and pray everything with your M16A4. Personally, I found this to work really well. And I gotta say, I actually like the idea of this letter. I like the M16A4 from an aesthetic standpoint, Burst fire wise, I think there's just kind of a fundamental issue with most burst fire weapons in Battlefield because of the damage model. You have to, generally speaking, burst at least twice to get a kill, which puts you at a considerable disadvantage over full auto weapons. That being said, it can still be a fun weapon to run with uh, when set up properly. Now, running iron sights is always going to be a disadvantage in Battlefield because of the way iron sights are rendered, showing you a fully rendered out front post, which generally speaking, when you're aiming down iron sights, your eye tends to blur that out and you're not obstructing your vision as much uh, in battlefield it does obstruct your vision and makes it harder to find your target sometimes the m16 iron sights aren't that bad but compared to any red dot sight you're going to be at a considerable advantage just using that red dot sight now i don't generally run with the grenadier perk but it's pretty darn good and maybe i'll run with it a little bit more getting that extra grenade for your primaries is extremely useful especially when running with an m67 frag that has the potential to one-shot somebody at full health. Um, I love throwing extra grenades. I have to almost remind myself that I have an extra grenade with this loadout, and as you continue to upgrade that field upgrade, if you ever do, it's not that easy to do in TDM, but then you'll get the extra grenade launcher grenades, which are extremely useful. I love using the grenade launcher for bursting through walls and then wasting people with the M16. Not as crazy about uh, direct shotting people with the grenade launcher because it's a little bit less consistent, and I like to just rely on the actual bullets for the kills. However, it does come in handy when you know you're up against a superior force and that if you peek a corner, you're probably just going to get gunned down by three or four people, but you have no other option than to peek that corner. In that case, I will switch to the grenade launcher, quick peek, shoot a grenade, try and get a kill that way, and then sort of heal up and peek back. This can be a nice little way to get kill picks uh, rather than exposing yourself for too long to try and do it with your primary weapon. Now, as far as the way this weapon is outfit, I love having the underslung grenade launcher. It just looks really cool. But uh, the heavy barrel is something that I probably wouldn't put on this weapon if I were trying to customize it and make it uh, the best it could possibly be, just because it does add that extra bit of vertical recoil to the end of the burst, I believe. Now, it doesn't add it to the front of the burst, which it used to do, which made it even worse. But even so, when the extra amount of recoil is added to the end of the burst, it means that it's going to be harder to get back on target. And generally speaking, when I have a burst fire weapon, I want to reduce that recoil as much as possible because that is one of the main disadvantages of the burst fire weapon, that and your inability to actually fire the gun at the maximum rate of fire, unless you're some sort of battlefield monk that can burst fire at the perfect intervals every time, which frankly, let's be honest, very few people can do that, and more than likely the people who are doing that are using some sort of script to shoot the weapon in the perfect intervals. So I'd get rid of the heavy barrel. You could play around with an angle grip and see if it's something that you prefer running, or just no heavy barrel at all, um, and then run the weapon with something like a red dot sight to help you as much as possible stay on target because the iron sights are workable with certain weapons out there but because it's a burst fire weapon you need as much help with the accuracy as possible since you're at a disadvantage in the rate of fire department now aesthetically this gun looks badass i like the look of the m16 especially with iron sights it's got a very classic look to it even this one with sort of the more modern rail system setup which is for all the cool attachments you use in battlefield 4. the blue tiger camo doesn't look that outlandish and i could totally see it being some sort of custom m16 design for for coming out of the water as Navy SEALs or something like that, or just maybe a weapon you might use aboard a naval ship or something like that. Just kind of a, a bluish camo that blends in with the rest of your surroundings. Obviously, it's not gonna help me out in a green environment here on Goldmud Railway, but 
it's just a little bit of extra flair in case I kill somebody and they're checking me out on the kill cam. They're like, oh man, that guy's got a cool gun. Now the laser sight looks cool. It also looks pretty darn cool with iron sights when you're aiming down sight. I put the tri-laser beam on here just to give it that extra little bit of flair, but uh, it's not really that appropriate for the M16A4. For the most part, I'm not gonna be hip firing this gun. However, I will say because of the lack of red dot sights, it did come in handy when I needed to hip fire in CQB because uh, it's just hard to track your target with irons and I would opt for hip firing in a lot of situations where I would normally use my red dot sight simply because the irons are just so unusable. However, when I'm peeking out of a window or something like this here, I'll actually turn it off because nothing gives you away more than a bright red light across the map and especially somebody who's sniping or shooting rockets, they're gonna point that right at the window that I'm hiding in. So for long range combat, I will turn it off and then turn it back on when I get into CQB. It's not particularly great on big wide open maps because it just makes you stick out like a sore thumb. In CQB, it's not as bad because for the most part, if you come around a corner, somebody's gonna see you anyway, laser sight or not, so you may as well have that extra bit of hip fire accuracy. I suggest if you like running with laser sights to get into a habit of turning it on and off in appropriate situations. Put it on a button that you can access regularly or just get used to hitting that T key. Now, as we work our way up on Rush Goldmud Railway, which I actually like as a Rush map, I think it's pretty fun, has a nice amount of diverse gameplay, a lot of sniping in the start, and then it gets a little bit more CQB towards the end of the map. This kid actually makes a lot of sense. I can't really revive teammates, but uh, I can be a good squad mate, I can heal people, and I can always open up ways to move through buildings, and that's really important in this map, and those grenade launchers are just a lot of fun. I like to blow a hole in the building, don't worry about reloading the grenade launcher, just switch to your primary, rush in there, kill anybody in the building, and then once you know you're safe, then go for the grenade launcher reload. It allows me a lot of opportunities to uh, get into nasty little hiding spots too, especially if I'm guarding an MCOM or I arm an MCOM and then have to guard it before the enemy team can get there to try and disarm. Now, when it comes to my skill with burst fire weapons, I know I really need to work on my follow through. And that's basically because when it's burst fire, I tend to stop the movement of the weapon every time I burst. I don't know why that is. It's just sort of habit rather than following through the, the direction that my opponent is moving so if they're running perpendicular I want to keep the gun moving in that same direction as I fire it's something that kind of comes naturally when I'm firing full auto but for whatever reason with burst fire I just stop the movement of the weapon and I think that causes me to miss a lot of my shots so that's something that I'd work on or work on a lot more if I used more burst fire weapons as always guys thanks for watching don't forget to leave your comments down below for the next week episode of loadout and I'll see you guys next time this is level cap signing off